This thing in chamber four. Yes, you can get us sit down. No, I do not. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> That's probably enough. Today you're a winner. Unless they're, they're on a fire van. They call it uh, right, fire from the sky. Works. And so they soak the campfire in kerosene. And then somebody stands up in a tree and there's a cable that runs down to the fire. And then they light like a toilet or a paint roll soaked in kerosene. And then they okay. just fling it down the. Have you seen what that? is this? And they sling it down the cable, metal cable, and it ignites the. Uh, wow. In the world. And uh, so, so we do it all the time. It's not not a big deal. Uh, but somebody one time didn't have any kerosene, so he's like, "Oh, we'll just use gasoline, gasoline. No, like unleaded gas." But it's supposed to like. And they were like, fabulously catch fire. Singed eyebrows in the front row because it just went. <laughs> so it's uh, gonna be part so, of our. My brother in law ritual. Oh. Oh yeah, that room. was crazy. Ashley and I were coming home from a, a little getaway, uh, and Ali and I were playing with it, sorry. No, no, no. And uh, we're, we're not sure if this is enough. Oh. Like this. Oh, really? I was reading this Oh, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, like that. <laughs> 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 okay. That feels very good. That is awesome. Okay, perfect. I love that. Thank you, love. Um, can I use this table? Can I That's cool. They say, if you play with fire, you pee your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, you'll get burned. <laughs> nope, don't pee your pants. Also duct tape. Um, so. I wonder if we should put huh? another piece. Yeah, anyway, you were saying something. Oh, uh, we actually just mentioned uh, our brother-in-law. He, uh, 
<laughs> he was lighting a big bonfire in his house with his big bonfire. I mean, it was like going in. Yeah, there was two really short. Three layers. I brought blankets. Who did not invest in the Yusho upper deck coat? Lit it, and then like, you know, like that. Like, you know, 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 like, you um, you got, you got I think I better just keep it at yeah, this point, okay. but thank you. I, yep, nope. I do appreciate I'm just that. Spot, I'm just spotting you. I'm going to put this like where it's not totally smoky. Very fancy. This is why I don't throw dinner parties, guys, because this is how fancy <laughs> I am. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing. As, as fancy as I anticipated it to be. Thank you. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the perfect amount of space. Oh, is that from the other summer that we did it? Or is, is that just no, one project? Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. yeah. No. We, what, what did we do that for? Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Oh, did you hear Candace press? Yeah. When did they, are they, did they open this yeah. week? Yeah. Oh, you got your opening day. I love it. I expect no less. You know. uh, it was very busy, but we wisely ordered ahead online and just picked it up. So, but there were My favorite part about it, though, is one of my really good friends. Was it worth it, or was it just as mediocre as I remember it? For some reason. So he's sitting cross legged in the front row, and this thing goes, and got this on film, which is so it's in the camp video. So it goes, boom, and he just goes, boom. Just like no, <laughs> no reaction. And he goes, that's awesome. It's the greatest thing about that. Very awesome. Chair. Mine looked so, I have the blades at home that look so groovy, and I gave you some water, and it was just yeah. good chairs, so just more awkward. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Hey, a little bit more. Um, oh, that's good. You guys have a better yeah, print, like, like an artist. Hi, oh. no, everyone online. I've got a Kansas City Chiefs chair. at first and then it kind of got pretty chilly <laughs> and then they ran out of firewood <laughs> and I had to start breaking down a pallet to, to, to keep the fire going but that, that's, that was interesting to see because everybody had been drinking a little bit so now now you got inebriated people breaking down a, a pallet in the dark <laughs> there was, it was uh it was not the most safe activity to do <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was fun. We have a fire pit in the fire pit area in our backyard. It's a little bit warmer. 
we would we would like to. Our our backyard is an absolute shit show. It's just it's because the dogs have been back there, and we've been having ever since like we moved in, we've been having um, issues with our um, with our plumbing, and so it's just a nightmare. <laughs> So that's a summer project that we're going to be working on. Get it, get it into a place where we can go and have, have a, yeah, enjoy it. Exactly. There's no enjoying it right now. It's just look out the back window and just shake your head. I'm like, oh. Yeah, one's one's very non memorable She's very, she's a very mellow border uh, collie mix. She's a, that's Ashley's dog, and then my dog is a German short haired pointer, which is a very, it's the probably the dog that you are thinking of. And she's very high energy. him up and he could barely walk. So I called the vet right away and then he like threw up and like his whole body weight just fell into the speaker and he like couldn't get off. And so I we took him to the vet right away and they thought well first they they were I think they were doing surgery so they couldn't do anything. So they put him in a kennel and they the mouse try to do X rays and they don't do CAT scans here. You have to go to Denver fancy CAT scans but they uh they said he had a seizure like on the table when they were trying to x-ray and stuff and he got really scared and so they gave him a sedative and put him back in the kennel. And then she called me to tell me that and she said, you know, we're going to rest a little bit and we'll try again. And then she went over and she really passed away. And, uh, like when we dropped him off at the party, we were going to pull and we think that we would never pick him up again. You know? No, no. And so she said she just thought there must have been a brain in. Yeah, the only thing he had was like, old age, she said his eyes were just starting to barely cloud up a little. Yeah. Like you couldn't even tell. Like, he gave no sign of not being able to see. Oh. So yeah, we were just like, yeah, that's so I'm weird. sure <laughs> I would be too. Yeah. 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 So, we have two cats, and then like two weeks after that, I went on a 16 year old cat couldn't walk. <laughs> so oh I was like, gosh. freaked out about that. It just kept coming. Yeah, and it turned out she got better after a week. I researched it. The vet said I was like, that it was like it's called this vestibular disease, where they just like lose their balance. And she couldn't hold her head off. Uh, I can't before it post, so you wouldn't have to. Has she recovered? Yeah, now she's better. They figured out her kidneys are shutting down, but now it's that was also very Right hey, we do you think this would be safe to put wasn't gonna go marshmallows to on? Um, before, probably. Like, uh, it's a main mess. Uh, okay. okay. We have so we have not <laughs> enough for her. Do we? Okay. Because I've got this one. Go. I'm going to give it to Claude. She's still a little wobbly. Is it safe to do Mark and I'm going to put him on the I thought about that too. Talk to the children. We've been very fortunate. Our friends have really, really as well prepared. Although I would not be surprised our the border collie mix is starting. She's old. She's starting to slow down. Uh, that's okay. We waited for you because all of you are stays fairly quiet. This is very grateful. Yeah, we're I'm going to hand that to you, Lars. It's a stack. And take one and share with all your friends. Okay. Thank you, sir. Are you getting some kind of stand for me? It 
<laughs> Are we supposed to get, <laughs> get a drinks? Holder on your music stand. <laughs> I guess so. That's what I'm going to do. That would be annoying. Dan, have one? I'll just go to the I'll take one. Okay. Heck yeah, baby. I brought my own. That is so funny because when your husband was like Shiraz or Caps Off, I was like, your wife does not have any white. Can I get started? Yeah, I'm going to get started. Well, now you're here, so we can. Yeah. 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 Well, I was at, I because we have specific people. Hello. Yeah. Hi. You know. Are you related to the Hinkle that's on TV now? On the news? Hinkle's become sort of a popular random name. That like professor or Dr. Hinkle from the college. Oh, really? Yeah, he's like Because he's like one of the better broadcasts. I will take one. Yeah, thank you. So maybe I am related. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, they're all like 21 and fresh out of school. I know. It's a jumping off. If they are good, they don't stay here too long. Right. So I do not need a microphone, right, Allie? You don't, but if you would stay more yeah. to the left, okay. um, your head might be cut off by the slide window right now. Okay. The sun is. That's fine. Forgot to bring my chair. I will do that. Left in too much of a hurry. But that makes sense. Or I can. No, 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 no. Where you? Uh, I will stand wherever you want. I just. Yeah, uh, I think that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. I even brought my winter coat and hat and gloves just in case. I know, because I went to pick Cora up from school, and I was like, I'm going to be so hot in this. And then as I was picking her up, like a wind kicked up, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cold. Well, the sun goes down. Yeah. Depending on how long we're here now. Um, yeah, depending. So all night prayer service. We're going back. Right, this baby. <laughs> Hope you guys packed your jannies. Finish up all the swimmers. Oh, I have my van. I got the bed in there. <laughs> Take a nap and come back. Yeah. Um. So, hello, everyone. This is going to be extremely informal um, to such a high degree that if y'all don't want to sit in rows and you just kind of want to sit around here, you are welcome to. You are also welcome to stay in rows, whatever you prefer. Those of you at home who are watching this later because nobody's watching it live, um, <coughs> get some wine and some dessert and join us for worship. Um, the idea with the s'mores is honestly that more or less you can just have them throughout the service. It's kind of like how we talk about coffee at the morning service. So help yourself to any of the components or to a whole s'more. Um, we will use the graham crackers as part of Holy Communion. Um, whew, those can also be uh, full s'mores for communion if you want. Yeah, I just changed, oh, the the on TV, changed direction right? and got really warm. Isn't that part on, on the camera though? What? The fire pit? Yeah, probably. Let's okay. see. I'm not doing s'mores in the middle of the service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so don't feel bad. Okay, well, I'm probably going to. There you go. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I, I think that's all of the information that people need ahead of the service. Um, there are not very many of us, so sing loudly, please. You like my hair?
joy, not because our lives are perfect, but because joy is resilient. God's gift for every season and the wellspring at the heart of our faith. When our sin feels heavy, we practice, we practice joy. joy. When floods rise and fall, we, we practice, practice joy. joy. When hope surprises us, we, we practice joy. joy. When God sets people free, we, we practice, practice joy. joy. When Jesus heals us, we, we practice joy. When we are called, we, we practice joy. When we endure, we, we practice joy. joy. We practice joy together, and, and God, God is with us. us. All right, so um, our confession and forgiveness this evening is like the exact opposite of what a lot of liturgical churches do on Maundy Thursday. On Maundy Thursday, a lot of liturgical churches have people confess their individual sins instead of doing the corporate um, confession and forgiveness. And I guess we're kind of doing the same thing. What I would like you to do is just sort of make your confession to God, think about, um, an area of your life or something like that in which your intention and your actions are not as well aligned as you would like. Um, and when you feel like you have talked it out with God enough, then we're going to have our little, um, our little confessional, absolutional ritual. Um, you're going to take a scoop of this. I know, pretty cool, right? My spouse taught me that from Rainbow Trail. Um, and that will just sort of allow you to see all of that burned away and rising up, your prayer rising up as incense before you. So we'll just be quiet for a little bit while that happens, but here's your official invitation. People of God, the merciful one already knows everything we confess. By naming our sins and hearing words of forgiveness, we are drawn deeper into relationship with God and one another. Let's bring before God what we have done wrong and what we have failed to do, trusting that we will receive the joy of being forgiven.
But now you'll do this. It'll be great. Do you want to try again? often as you need to or want to.
How do you like yours? Just kind of brown? God is worthy of our trust, and you may now rejoice in being forgiven as a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin, in the name of the Creator, and of the Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. God's people say, Amen. Um, we're going to sing again. Uh, no, um, I realized I'm looking at the bulletin and not my order of worship, which is why I have none of the words of worship, and I can probably stop panicking now, because probably I put them in my order of worship. Probably. So in your bulletin, the next song is, there's a place, second verse, there's another line that is not listed in here. At the end of that second verse, it says, set it free. Um, Totally oh man, I want to say their real absolution. Can I say it? It's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. Say it. You've already been. Not absolutely. Receive God's joyful gift. You are entirely and completely forgiven for all of your sin. You are entirely and completely welcomed as God's beloved child. You are released to live out God's love in a world that needs such joy. In the name of the Creator and of the Christ and of the Holy Spirit. Um, see, very good. Now I, feel I know, now you're truly involved. <laughs> First you didn't take it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Some of y'all need an extra absolution. These people are sinners. You have to be absolved twice.
promise a joy-filled future against all reason. Reach us with that expectant joy, even here and now, as we follow Jesus to the cross through an unsettled present. Help us rejoice that we will rejoice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry. Yeah. No. So please. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read scripture for you, and I had a contemplative prayer planned, and I will tell you, you what it off. is. And if you um, are into it, then we'll do that. And if not, we'll just kind of talk about the scripture together. So there you go. Um, well, I guess I should tell you the practice before I read the scripture to you, huh? Um, it is called imaginative prayer, and some of you will have heard of St. Ignatius, and um, it's an Ignatian prayer, and in this form of prayer, you sort of imagine yourself in the scene of the, that is painted by scripture, and then you kind of, kind of imagine what it smells like, what it feels like, what emotions are there, what time of day is it, what's the weather like, what, um, you know, just kind of everything. Um, and you can have a conversation with Jesus if that is where it goes, or you can um, just sort of watch the supper unfold. Um, so that is the prayer. I will read the scripture to you, and then we can sort of make a decision together about if we would like to do that. Okay? Everybody feel like they know what we're talking about? Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, <coughs> to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you all are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was about to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of y'all are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Darlings, I am with you only a little longer. 
you will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So the options before us are, I can read that again, and you can sort of imagine yourself dropping into the scene and sort of, you just figure out, maybe you'll take on the role of one of the characters, maybe you'll be an uh, onlooker, who knows. Um, usually the Holy Spirit does something. Full disclosure, this is my least favorite kind of contemplative prayer, but I decided to do it because some people really love it, and I thought it's not fair for people to not have the option just because I don't like it. Um, so I leave that open. The other thing we can do is sort of have a Bible study and talk about what stands out to you and how you make sense of this and a more typical thing that we have done. Does anyone have any preferences? Good, good. <laughs> I, I'm, I have a very robust and active imagination, so it's, this is an easier thing for me to do, but I know that's not for everybody. I'm, I'm keen with that, or I'm also fine with having this, this a discussion. I, I would love, I find that really interesting. Would someone throw that trash in the trash? <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's do the one we don't do very much. Okay. Because it doesn't hurt us to start our little wings. It does not. It certainly does not. Um, so let me give you a tiny bit more instruction then before I read the scripture again. Um, so St. Ignatius believed that God worked powerfully through our imagination and that... Um, is he crying? No, he's laughing. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and that um, if... if the Holy Spirit, if we ask the Holy Spirit to place us into a scriptural passage, um, the Holy Spirit would do that, and then God would commune with us there. So we will begin by asking God to bless your imagination and asking the Holy Spirit to guide and protect you. And um, you'll take a few moments of quiet. They, um, The Ignatian sort of invocation is come Holy Spirit enlighten my heart and mind to listen to your word and then I will read the passage probably at least twice until it becomes pretty familiar and then um, you then they invite you to use all of your senses to let the gospel passage unfold in your imagination so what is the location like what time of day are the people there? What can you hear? What can you smell? What are you touching? What can you taste? What emotions are evoked throughout? They encourage you to let the story unfold naturally and try to avoid analyzing actions or finding applications like I should be more like the disciples who don't question Jesus washing their feet or I should say sage things more like Jesus does or something like that. Um, and instead, just allow the blessing to come through experiencing the story with your whole being and not just your mind. Um, and then when you are ready to come out of it, um, to step out of the story, then just go ahead and do that and take a few moments of silence and then we'll come back. So, wine helps too. And wine might help us significantly. You know, just as one of the senses you're engaged. <laughs> yeah, she's all, I'm going to get another cup of imagination. Uh, <laughs> uh, come, Holy Spirit, enlighten our hearts and minds to listen to your word. Now, before the festival,
festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you all are clean, though not all of y'all. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of y'all are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Darlings, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father.
having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied, tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe, and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him, him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another.
Share. Let's I mean, share. It just kind of feels I'd like to know what everybody else was thinking. But I don't want to ruin the flow. No, it's fine. There's no flow. We're so, making the flow as we go. So, what you guys do in your imagination? Well, I'm not very good at meditating uh, and stuff, yeah. but the last two lines just kept resonating with me. When you think about what's going on in the world, about um, they will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Mm. We're not doing so good at that. <laughs> so in our job description, it does not meet expectations. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Yeah, the performance after Purim, right, the biggest party that your religion has every year. And you know this is the night that you're betraying him. I wondered for a minute if Judas went to take a pee during the foot washing. I mean, really, you, this is going, how do you do that? How do you look in the face of the person who's, you know, whatever, and I was thinking, we don't know anything about how Judas was called. That's not part of the story here. We know that Whatever he thought he agreed to, it wasn't what was happening. So he went back and said, oh, I didn't sign up for this. And they're like, peace out, baby. Yes, you did. Um, and so I was just kind of thinking about being in that position at the biggest party of the year for my religion and knowing that this was going to happen. That's interesting. Yeah. I was wondering, I feel like um, I always think everybody was paying attention to Jesus, right? Like that, like when Jesus is talking and saying all of this glorified and glorified and glorified, the whole room is just like raptly hanging on his every word. But like, like you said, it was a party. So maybe some of them were drunk. They were definitely tired. They all really liked each other too, or didn't, but like had relationships and surely for three years, he didn't command all of their attention all the time, right? I mean, 
even the people that you think are the most important, sometimes you're not paying attention. And so I was, I was wondering about that when I was in there. I was wondering like if people were chatting, if any of the disciples were like lovers and they were making plans for later or like, you know, just like what else was going on while Jesus was saying all of that stuff because it probably wasn't like, it wasn't a sermon. Right. It was conversation. My take is it's conversation he's having while all of this hullabaloo. I mean, you've, right. you've thrown a Thanksgiving dinner, right? You've right. thrown a thanks a Christmas feast. There's a lot to that and a lot of moving parts and a lot of stuff. I really want it to be a sermon. Yeah. And when we started reading it, I'm like, okay, I'm just the <laughs> nondescript sermon girl and what is this like to me? But I just kept it. Yeah, I just was thinking of like, you know, the sounds of a dinner party, the, the, the you know, the food's being passed, the glasses are clinky, you know, um, you know, murmuring around, people getting up, going to the bathroom, coming back, like, it's just like, you know, I just feel like sometimes we, like, our imagination gets trapped into that, like, that Leonardo da Vinci painting. <laughs> Yeah. Just like, oh, they're all just all so, you know, angelic and just standing there or sitting there all, all on one side. But, you know, I've, we've, I keep thinking of a party that Ashley and I threw many years ago uh, for a good friend of mine. And, um, you know, there was about six of us and we were all around the table and just really, it was just like a really just intimate, but also kind of rambunctious time. And, and, um, I just I keep imagining like what it would have been like to just get up from that and just start washing the feet of your guests. And, um, and then I also was thinking about the time when I tried to make this like an object lesson with my kids when they were about your kids' age. Actually, it was Thorson. Warren was probably about Thorson's age. And I took them outside and I had them all squish their toes in the mud and get all gross. And I was just, they were having so much fun doing that. Yeah. And then I told them the story. And then I sat there and I watched each of her feet in the, uh, in the water basin. And, um, so that just kind of took me there. And, and then I just keep hearing Jesus' words that you are clean. And so then I was thinking about, you know, our ceremony um, with the creamer and just like, what does it mean to be, to hear those words just like pronounced over you that, you're, that you are clean, that there is not, there is not a gross part of you to come. I'm not going to lie, I was judging Peter very harshly as one of the disciples because you do not get the sense that he went first. And so you get the sense a little, I get the sense that he's like a pompous ass because Jesus has washed like let's say four disciples' feet and then he gets to Peter and he's like, no, you would wash my feet? These other disciples might allow this shenanigan, but never would I allow this. And I was like, oh, fucking zip it, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. Why all the time you with the things? Like, can you just be here now for a minute? Right, exactly. Like, okay, we get it, Pete. You're very holy. Yes, yes. Thank you. Sit down and get your feet washed, my friend. Okay, Rocky. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, I, that's, I, that's the feeling I had about him when I was listening. Because you know, it does not say, like, he started with... And so you get the sense that, like, Peter's, like, watching them being like, just wait until it gets to me, and then I'm gonna, like... He's trying to do an object lesson, and I'm gonna drive it home. And Jesus is like... Father, give me strength. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking of a similar thing, uh, but more like Peter thought that Jesus would be like, but not Peter, right? Because right. Peter's the special one. Right. So he, Jesus gets to Peter, and Peter's like, Wait, what, what, what? But I'm not one of them. I'm Peter. <laughs> and then I was thinking, Carlene, about what you said about Judas, and there's. Uh, one of the Gnostic Gospels, so you're familiar with the uh -huh. idea. So, Gospels that didn't make it into the Bible, basically. And in one of them, uh, Judas is is the most with it of the disciples. And Judas is the one that gets it, which is why Jesus tells him to be the one to turn him in. 
so that it's all contrived. <coughs> his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. And I took that line and just sort of like added into every sentence, like and love was present there or like and changed sort of the, the feeling. Because I also feel like the end, the new commandment I give to you, love one another. And I often feel like if, what if that had been the verse that all of Christian don't had built this instead of John 3 16. Just instead of John 3 16. Or you go out and make disciples of all nations, regardless of whether or not they want to. Yeah, that's interesting. So I took it as putting love as a character in every part of the story, including when it said, like, the devil had already spoken to, I don't know what verse it is, I can't find it now, but the devil had already put it into the heart of, of Judas. Judas. But love was also there. Like, like he, he had lots of choices in that and then every step of the way like I don't think Jesus was correcting Peter it was like out of love being present and like all the different responses were out of love and so thinking about reframing if love was the same. Carlene you probably know this because you're the, the musical lead person um is it Jesus Christ Superstar where they sort of take that approach um the more <coughs> loving approach to Judas that kind of combines what those two were saying, where like Judas is trying to rein Jesus in and he can see that Jesus is like really getting he's just out of control. Yeah, he's just he's out of I'm control. Just so he's like, what I have to do. Right. So like if we rein him in now, maybe they won't kill him, maybe they'll just contain him. They didn't say anything about the killing. Right. Yeah. Um and thinking about that, that like if love was present there with Judas, maybe that's what like that's the way in which Judas wasn't like, eh better for one man to die than for a whole nation or whatever. He, but he was like, I am trying to save you, my beloved friend. But you just won't, it, like, um, almost like an intervention for an alcoholic, right. you know? Um, and it seems too colonial, colonial is convenient for the devil to have put it into his heart. I'm not quite sure where that came from, but okay. No, that's pretty fun. Because that makes it a, you know, not Judas, but right. the devil. Right. Yeah, the devil did it. Yeah. Um, Cole, have you heard this poem? Uh, what you were talking about made me think of this. It's called um, God Says Yes. I asked God if it was okay to be melodramatic, and she said, yes. I asked her if it was okay to be short, and she said, it sure is. I asked her if I could wear nail polish or not wear nail polish, and she said, honey, she calls me that sometimes, she said, you can do just exactly what you want to. Thanks, God, I said. And is it even okay if I don't paragraph my letters? Sweet cakes, God said. Who knows where she picked that up. What I'm telling you is, yes, yes, yes. And I was thinking of that because of what you were saying about the love and because the little children, um, the translation is, I think, a bad one. Um, it's more like darlings. Like, it, it, um, I think little children has a condescending feel to it. Like, and not a, 
not that we're not little children compared to Jesus, like spiritually and emotionally, but it's more like darlings, beloved ones, um, my dearests. And so that Jesus calls them darlings made me think of like, honey, she calls me that sometimes. <laughs> Babe. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, I appreciate everybody taking the detour. Thank you. Yeah. Unless it's part of the liturgy, then you can do it. So I'm not usually a very big fan of like religious like productions, like movies and shows and stuff like that, because usually they're bad. Yeah, really bad. Really? But I actually started watching the chosen. 
I so watched it. What's really so it's kind of cool. So it's really high production value. It looks like it was made by like HBO. Oh right. And the first episode is about ends with Jesus uh, exercising uh, from Mary Magdalene. Mm. And he uses he uses this Isaiah 43. And he says, "I shall be." Oh wow. And, and it's, That's it's cool. actually really really cool. Yeah. And I was, yeah. That is. Really so every time cool. I hear this song, like I yeah. think about. Mm -hmm. Obviously, oh, the, 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 table. the chosen. I wonder if that was any good. Is it on, on brand? Netflix? I didn't know if it'd be kind of too poppy. I, I not you. I'm actually, I'm very the chosen. Not a fan of things like that. And yeah. It is really. What are you in a fan? Religious. Well, and if it pisses off the anti-evangelicals, it's probably on target. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. But I mean, this seems to be pretty wildly like. You know, people like it from all and from all angles. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's really high production value and it's, it's actually very It did look feature movie like. Yeah, it's yeah. very it's very engrossing. I um, I like it. And from your perspective, is it fairly does it kind well, of fairly track with what Yeah, it takes a lot of liberties, uh, sure. it, you know, artistic licenses, but um, but for the most part it, it really tries it really what it tries to do is it tries to help you feel like feel like you're there like feel like it really like sets the scene of like the roman oppression you know really you feel that and just the you know the, the different tier system like there's a, there's one system for the romans and one system for the jews and it's it's really it's pretty cool i i give it i give it a shot it's just the first episode it's pretty and jesus doesn't show up until like last like a minute and yeah, so the majority of it is all about uh, oh, I know. Demons and his and his, and his, and his experiences. Yeah. 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 Of course, well, it's worked really well. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was always like, I, well, you know, I just got, a, you know, I just got a wild hair and just go. And I'm just gonna give it a try. And I started watching. And I go, dang, this is actually pretty good. I know. I like it's a little bit overdone. Yeah. I've had one at Grandma's like so much. How do you feel about it? Are these things really free about our ham crackers? Did you just say how she said there was some here and they tasted it? I just asked you guys. I bet they are. Oh, yeah, and it's, there's <laughs> plenty of them. Then I don't care. I'm not a super science person. No, you're not. Mama, I got this one for the My goal this morning is to more sour than sweet. cook the outside of the marshmallow and see how many layers I can get. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Pull that cook thing off and cook the next one and see how many. That's what I was asking. Do they ever have a big giant marshmallow? That's what you do with them. Oh, no, it's all fire.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God, there is no time, no place where you are not present. And there is no time, no place where we should not practice the joy of praising you, even here, even now, in our ordinary lives. As we give thanks, we join the choir of our ancestors and our heirs and all God's angels as you set our breath to the rhythm of joy that we may sing of heaven despite the world. saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the heart of fear and pain, God plants the seed of our joy. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your spirit upon this food and cup, Christ's body and blood, the food that gives us the strength to persist until joy appears. Send your spirit upon us and fortify us to be your body too, a wellspring of hope for a world in need. All glory, power, and honor are yours, God of brilliant resurrection and quiet joy, today and every day. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, <coughs> bound together despite all that would separate us, <coughs> let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Creator, our Mother, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. <coughs> This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. Cora Christine? Yeah? Can you get the other children and clean up these wrappers, please? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you, baby. My hair got in the way. My hair is in the way, too. I'm just saying. Good job, Cora. Yeah. 
Alright, so this one... Are we doing the rounds? Yes, we yes we are. So, uh, we're going to do it all through one time. So we're going to sing the whole thing through together. And then we're going to start back at the beginning with Father I Adore You. And then we're going to split up. And so some of us will keep singing and keep going forward. While uh, others will go back to the first verse and then proceed on from there. And then you want to have very young so, two so, or three. So on our moments, we'll, we'll be we'll be one. We start at one. Three. three. All right. There's three of us. Three. Well, no, three parts. Yeah, make sure. Yeah. Like, we can be number one, two, three. three. Oh, we're three. We're the oh, mighty three. three. Oh, good, Carlene. Yeah. Yeah. We will start. A blessing or a curse, we don't know. This group will go second, and this group will go third. Cole, you can figure Cole's out what you want Cole's to with us. What do not know what we're doing? Because Cali's okay. over there, there so close with us. You, it'll, you'll catch on, like, row, row, okay. row your boat. Oh. We will start, we will so sing the first line. We're forced. When we finish we that are. first line, you all start? will start. Okay, okay. okay. and you'll start at the beginning and go all the way through. <laughs> Okay. And then once they have fun. sung, Carlene, we'll be great. Kathy, no. and Lars, once they have sung the first line, then you come in. Okay. And I'll try to help cue you, you while I'm singing other things. <clears throat> I'll do my best. No, no, no pressure. Really, it's the third group that really brings it home. You know what I mean? I mean, we're really the, the ones that sell it.
exactly hey, what Bart, it is. Bart wants to do it again. The whole Bart service. Bart 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 Father, I adore you. Who's in? All right, I'm in. Why not? I know. We can't learn this. You can learn it if you want to, Kathy. No one's going to stop, can we? I want to. I want to make it a thing. Sunday about um, when, you, when we did the postcards and about how you 